We woke up this morning in Germany, but the day is ending in the Netherlands. Our little floating home has almost made it through the entire continent of Europe. But as we near the Netherlands and the sea, it doesn't only feel like the end of the journey, it feels, in some small and strange way, like returning home. And what a feeling for an eternal traveler to feel a small sense of knowing. Join us as we cross the border into the country where my family comes from and where Magic Carpet will soon be free to sail once again. I'm Maya, and this is Aladino. In mid-November, we converted our 28-foot sailboat into a riverboat, and we started going north, from the Mediterranean all the way to the North Sea. In front of us, we had 2,000 kilometers and 200 locks. Join us as we navigate river currents, discover incredible places, cruise through canals, wait out a global pandemic in the heart of France, and record the whole voyage with a new episode every Friday. This is North Through the Continent. We're going north through the continent. And it was actually a way more incredible place than we were expecting. Uh, when we came in, seeing all this industry around, we thought there wouldn't be much in the town, but the town itself was very cleverly and aesthetically built around the industry, and I actually really like how they did it. So coming up today, we have an even more exciting event, because today we are going to cross the border into the Netherlands. This is exciting on a few different levels. First of all, because it marks what is essentially the end of the North Through the Continent journey. We set out in November to go all the way through Europe using the inland waterways, and once we reach the Netherlands, we'll be pretty much at the end of that entire journey, which is a huge milestone. But I'm also just excited to be in the Netherlands because it's the Netherlands and because the Dutch have this incredible ethos around sailing. Everyone sails and they've just got this amazing do-it-yourself attitude. They've got a huge amount of history. They've got a huge amount of knowledge and excitement around sailing. All of my family is from there. It's just going to be incredible to be there and show you guys this rich marine world that exists in the Netherlands and to experience more of it myself. So a big day today, a big change. We're, we're leaving Germany, we're going into the Netherlands. I couldn't be more excited about it. This was our last full day on the Rhine. I have to admit that I won't miss it. Although the Rhine River has had some beautiful moments, overall the experience has felt like driving a smart car on a highway surrounded by semi-trucks who all have the right of way and who can drive on whichever side of the road they please. It has not been a relaxing river cruise, and I'm not the only one who thought that. So my love, today is our last day on the Rhine River. Hopefully. What are your feelings about it? 
Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I got used to the speed and uh, it will be very boring to go everything <laughs> under seven knots. But yeah, on the other side, um, I also won't miss it, I no. don't think. <laughs> yeah, so I am, uh, I'm happy. I'm also excited to get to the Netherlands and mostly means uh, we're getting on the ocean again. And I can get rid of uh, our extra jugs that we carry for diesel, we can get rid of two fenders, we can get rid of all the, the parts we have to have our mast on the boat right now. So yeah, it will be good. The end was in sight and the crisp air of a northern summer was here to welcome us. Also, I have to say, it's about a week that I'm always wearing a hoodie in this Yay. damn canal. Isn't that of, refreshing? Uh, river. Yeah, it's clearly a bit further up north. Yay! <laughs> Not yet. To start out, the views were more or less the same as the day before. The Lower Rhine has even more traffic and industry than the Upper Rhine. An estimated 600 commercial barges pass the Dutch-German border every day. Smokestacks puffed out the smog of production as we were swept past, dodging heavy barges laden with the results of all this activity. barge overtaking us at the moment and then up ahead there's um, a barge which I think must be having engine trouble because it's just stopped in the middle of the channel. All the radio communication is in Dutch so we don't know what's going on. Okay actually we think that the the barge that's stopped in the middle might be waiting to go into this canal here which would make sense it has to turn in uh, but it's interesting because this canal is not actually on our chart so and it says do not enter. So yeah I well, it doesn't say specifically for sport boot? No, but if there is a no sign, it normally means not for us. Anyway, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it seems like the stopped barge is turning into this uncharted canal, so that's why they were waiting. The barges were getting crazier by the minute, like this one, which consisted of six barges tied together, two long and three wide. When we had a break from the industrial buildings, we could see that the landscape was starting to look a lot more like the Netherlands. Flatlands stretched out into the distance, windmills turned lazily in the slight but ever-present breeze. But there wasn't too much time for sightseeing. All eyes had to be on the river. Germany and the Netherlands are both European countries in the Schengen area, which means crossing the border is much like crossing between states in the USA or between provinces in Canada. Not much happens except for maybe a sign on the road, and sometimes even that is missing. Are we there yet? Almost. Almost? Yes, and then it will be the same situation again like it was with France and Germany, right shore here in the Netherlands, but it still will be uh, German also on the opposite side for like 10 kilometers. We're still not there? No. No! We are on the border line! Woohoo! And now in the we Netherlands! Made it. We're home! Kind of. Home. Everywhere is home. That's true. Wherever we move but our Holland home. For me, it's definitely the most home of anywhere in Europe. Hey. Not for you, but for me, I think. There's European borders for you. Our map shows that we're crossing the border, but there's literally no sign of it anywhere. Not a flag. There's not a flag, there's not a sign, there's nothing. Shortly after crossing, we turned into a lake to anchor for the night. So this is where we think we will be spending the night. It looks like a very small channel, so I'm a little bit nervous about depth, and we don't know anything about depth. 
but we will try. 1.8? Ah, 1.9. Yeah, we'll we see. We should make it. We should make it if it stays like this. It was time to relax and celebrate. Cows drank at the water's edge and we carefully wove between the navigation markers. The depth sounder crept up, but we figured we'd just scrape by, although hopefully not literally. We almost made it, the depth rose again. But um, yeah, I didn't even do a lot of research on this because I just wanted to cross the border. But we are pretty tired now and it's 7 p.m. Seven hours of motoring is enough to get the brains fried. Mm -hmm. So we're just going into here and it looks like a big bay, which also around the corner should have a harbor and a few docks. But it looks pretty cool. It looks like a recreation fun lake. Ah, it feels like the Netherlands. It's all flat, there's lots of water, and everything is neat and tidy. So yes, we are a little bit concerned about depth. Uh, Navionics is not showing depth for this little lake, so we're gonna have to try and figure out um, some local charts or something to get that. And I know we're gonna get a million suggestions for that now. By the time you watch this, we're gonna be long past the Netherlands, probably. Um, so we thank you for your suggestions, but you don't, you don't all have to leave them. I'm sure we'll figure something out. We'll talk to some local sailors and see what we can do for charts. We set the anchor in just enough water. We were home for the night. Refreshing then. Feels so good though. Yeah, I bet. Mm. Not that bad. I just am in a lazy mood. I don't feel I like guess exercising. It's a shallow lake in July, maybe I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Here it gets colder. <laughs> I should really clean. Oh. I know magic carpet's getting a bit scrummy. It's so scrummy. We have to haul out somewhere in the Netherlands. All these shrub real good. Yeah. Everyone has some place they call home, and now I'm a little closer to mine. The air is sweetly cool in a familiar way. I threw on some clothes and I didn't look at them. I looked outside, I looked at my book, I looked at the violin waiting to be played. The candle flickered, the music poured softly around the cabin. Everything was still, the water, the air, my mind, yet at the same time, everything felt quietly charged with life. That's what home is, I guess, a place that you know so intimately that you can feel every whisper even when it's not there. All around me are memories and ideas and sentiments that swirl around in this still air. And I'm not even really home, but I'm so much closer. What a feeling for an eternal traveler to feel a small sense of knowing. I will savor it while it lasts.
much, my love. No worries. Enjoy. So our first day in the Netherlands came to a close. The next day we would take the Isel River to Kampen, where we would re-step the mast and start sailing once again. This series, North Through the Continent, will end then. But a whole new series will begin, a series filled with silent travel and the discovery of this beautiful country. There are so many good things to come, but for now, in this quiet and shallow lake, with the sky growing ever darker and the faint sounds of music wafting across from the shore, this episode will end. I want to thank you all so much for watching this episode and the entire North Through the Continent series. We're very excited to share the next series with you all. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up as that helps a lot and subscribe to the channel, making sure to click the notification bell so that you actually get notified when we post a new episode. And a big thank you, as always, to our patrons for making this possible. The patrons get lots of behind the scene bonuses, real time updates, direct messaging with us and other little perks, and uh, they are what make this uh, whole series possible. So if you want to check out Patreon, I will put a link in the description and we're very grateful. Even $2 a month is super helpful. And an extra big thank you, as always, to these folks who really go the extra mile to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps producing videos and we'll see you all in the next episode.